Hello and welcome to the Gospel Truth. Hey. We appreciate you watching. Uh, tonight we are going to talk about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be a good one. Yeah. There's, there's so many things in the Bible that we don't know, such as uh, a lot. So there's so many things in the Bible that we don't really know about. Uh, and every once in a while, and then there's a lot of things in there that we think we know some things and we start to glean some revelation on, um, on particular topics, right? And so then we decide to go in and do some research and holy cow, here we go, you know? So that's how this... Um, what he just said was, we think we know stuff, then we go do the topics and then we right. realize how little we actually know. That's right. I'm translating the words holy cow yeah. because we don't believe in holy cows. Sorry. <laughs> Indians do. Anyway, so we uh, we decided to do this video on dinosaurs, and it'll evolve into some other things, but really, that's the topic we wanted to cover. So, let's start with what is a dinosaur, okay? Um, dinosaur, the word dinosaur was originally coined in the, uh, it, for the, for English, in about 1840s, 1850s, right. right? Right about the time of Lincoln. That's right. Uh, by a guy, uh, a British guy, and the word dinosaur is a combination of two Greek words, which quite literally means terrible lizard or terrifying lizard. So essentially, when you put into context what a dinosaur actually is, it is a big, giant, terrifying lizard. Scary reptile. That's right. It's a scary reptile. Now, you also have to go back and, and um, th this is this uh, particular episode is less about debunking science. Uh, the, I think the the general time frame from what science um, deems is that sixty five million years ago. Right, right. S they were all wiped out, and there's never been a dinosaur since. That's right. That's right. So that's science will say that uh, they do the uh, they do the testing, the carbon dating, and the uh, where they're found uh, in the sedimentary layers, and they dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, and as it as it happens, the Bible completely debunks that. What? Yeah. So <clears throat> the Bible clearly says that dinosaurs were around on the earth with man. And that's what we're going to go into tonight. Where is, so, let, so let's start with, so we start with what a dinosaur is, is a terrifying lizard. Right. Okay. So we, we, we clarify that because there will be passages in the Bible and passages in, in antiquity, na natural history um, of uh, dragons, mm -hmm. okay? Well, a dragon is a terrifying lizard, by the way. It's a big, flying, terrifying lizard. So that is the same classification as a dinosaur, and he'll talk more about that later on with the word, yeah. right? The no, word. I could totally I have words, yeah. Yeah. So just to recap already, we're not just talking about dinosaurs, we're talking about dragons, which yes. are clearly real. That's right. That's what the Bible says, and here we are going to tell you about them. So we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, because this lays the foundation for um, a, a providing an environment for which dinosaurs would have thrived in. Okay, So Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament which divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So what you have there is the earth and God dividing the, wa the, the land from the water. So there's water that sits underneath the land, right? But there's also water above all of that land. So he divided the waters from the waters. In essence, it created a um, uh, halo canopy. A, a, a canopy sort of, of water. Shell of water. That's yeah. right. Firmament meaning, meaning not um, not necessarily the earth, but like the 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 sky that we would see, like the atmosphere of the sky. That that is the concept of the firmament, too. So it's waters below that, and waters above that. 
That's right. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, uh, verse 5 and 6 say, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So what happened is it did not rain. People nope. did not know what rain was from the time Adam was on the earth, from the time Adam was created and was placed on the earth until the time of Noah's flood when it first started raining. These people had no idea what rain was. God, because of the canopy of water, caused, the, caused it to mist in the earth to water the plants. So how does that happen? Same way a rainforest works today, or the greenhouse effect, right? It created an atmosphere that was conducive for um, essentially what I am, now I am extrapolating this, but what I envision is an entire earth that's like the Garden of Eden. First of all, it was just one landmass, right. right? It wasn't separate continents, and it was one landmass, and that landmass was lush. Um, now, he did say, it does say, go and forth and replenish the earth. So we know that mm -hmm. the garden itself was lush. And there may have been areas that weren't yet lush that needed to be um, propagated, like you would take plants and plant them there and grow the garden. But the environment was all primed for lush universally throughout the whole world. I guess That's throughout right. the universe. Yeah. The other thing yeah. you have to take into consideration is that the average length of of time that man would live on the earth before the flood was 911 years. That's the average. I believe uh, Methuselah was the oldest. He was about 960, 969. 969. Adam was over 900 years, correct? So I think Adam. It was 960, but yeah, right about the same time. Those two overlapped. The entire antediluvian, like from. From the moment of recreation when Adam was created to the moment of the flood, one of those two guys was alive the entire time. That's right. <clears throat> so then one would say, well, you know, that was after the fall and it took time for the fall to take effect. I, I would not discount some of that, but I would say that mankind was the same back then as mankind is today. Right. And Adam was 130 years old when he had Seth. 130. His body, the bodies back then didn't change. What it was was the atmosphere was conducive to things living longer. Right. Their diets were perfect. The atmosphere was perfect. The, um, the, 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 the conditions back then were perfect for, uh, very conducive to live long lives. Right. Okay. That does not stop with humans. It also uh, happened with animals at that time. It, the, the, the conditions back then were conducive to animals living long right. lives. Okay? So, what, what we want to do is also go into some scripture and read about what the, you know, some of the accounts of dragons. Okay? Do you want to do, do uh, some? I got some yeah. of the, yeah. yeah. So um, there are two words in the uh, Old Testament, the Old Covenant, that are um, translated dragon or translated lizard, really. I guess there's a third one if you count Leviathan, but that's a unique being. That could be, uh, we could talk about that too. But the, um, the, the two words are like the serpent in the garden was called the Nakash. Nakash from the word meaning to hiss. But there's also the tanin, which is... Mm -hmm typically translated dragon, occasionally translated whale, which I think is probably just a mistranslation. Uh, but that means a large, a large serpent could be like in the air, on land, or in the water, often talked about in the water. Um, so it talks about um, Isaiah 21, 7 says, In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the, pier the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So that dragon there is Tenin. 
Right. And that dragon's in the sea. That dragon is in the sea. Leviathan was a sea uh, living dragon. Right. Okay. So, um, but what he said, just to clarify no, real fast ahead. before he moves on, that word tanin, which tr is translated in the Hebrew as dragon, is the same word that's translated for serpent, uh, sometimes whale, big giant beast. We'll say it that way. Right. Right. And I know some people probably think, well, we're reading from the King James, and King James was written in the time when people still thought there were dragons. No, uh, no, no. It, it, people did think there were dragons, but yeah. there are a whole lot of other people that... Um, it's not just a the biblical, biblical way. Yeah, there are 16 um, references, I'm looking it up right now, in the King James Version to dragons in the Old Testament. Um, so, well, not just the Old Testament, I guess. We're, there is coming a great and terrible dragon in the future as well. Um, and there's also the Which beast out of the sea. Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, just a quick natural point. Um, things also in the sea have the ability to grow larger than things on the land, specifically because their um, muscular and skeletal systems don't have to support the same kind of weight you would have to on the land. For instance, like we think about the blue whale being the largest animal, and it probably is the largest animal. Anyone that's recorded it wouldn't surprise me if they're things significantly larger, but the largest we know about. Um, but there are dinosaurs that were probably longer than, than the blue whale, but they weren't as large. And the reason is the displacement, the weight, the buoyancy, everything, it can grow larger around. If a blue whale would beach itself, it would die of suffocation, not because it can't breathe air, which it can because it's a whale. That's a mammal, just in case you were wondering. It's because the, the weight of the atmosphere without the water holding it up, it would basically crush itself to death with its own weight. Um, so things can go huge in the water. Yeah, the conditions in the water are conducive to these creatures getting really big, right? It's the same as before. Same concept as before. That's right. <clears throat> the largest crocodile that's almost, uh, that, as far as I can tell, that's ever been found is about 21 feet long and almost two tons, uh, almost a ton, 2,300 pounds, right? So that's a big animal. Big old animal. It's a big animal. And it lives, obviously, the water and the land. So when you think about that, that animal is 70 to 100 years old and has grown to 21 feet and 2,300 pounds in 70 to 100 years. Man on the earth lived... To, to as an average of 911 years before the flood. So if animals are the same as humans, right? So this crocodile lives 70 to 100 years, which is pretty, that's probably, I think the, probably the average when you take in sure. suicides, murders, things like that. The average is probably. Crocodile suicide, yeah. yeah I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> the average said. human lifespan gotcha. right now. Gotcha is probably in the 50s, somewhere there, but you got to take everything in, right? It's, so, it's so a little the, older than that, but yeah, it's actually in the 70s. So uh, the, for man and the, woman, yeah. Okay, at, so, least, at least in the United States. Yeah, so we're so it's about the same as a crocodile is what I'm saying. The average person is going to live somewhere between 70 and 100 years. That crocodile is the... So it's the parallels, right? The, the parallel is the same. That crocodile would be 10 times larger now... Back then, then it then uh, the, if it lived as long as humans lived back then, right? So you right if if they continue to grow, which is what lizards do, reptiles do, Good. reptiles, fish, um, amphibians, amphibians, which is obviously what a crocodile is, kangaroos, <laughs> some mammals, kangaroos specifically don't a kangaroo, stop growing. specifically a kangaroo. Think about a. 700-year-old kangaroo. That's right. Th those things That's never right. stop growing, even to this day. They're, they never stop growing. They grow until they die. Now, their growth slows as they, get, as they reach maturity. The growth process slows, but they never stop, which right. is why that crocodile is 21 feet long. Right. So then multiply that times 10. That cr same crocodile would be 210 feet long and almost 23,000 pounds. That, my friends, is a dinosaur. Right. Right. Now, what we're not seeing is like a Triceratops or a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So there may be species that did die out. 
long time ago. Unless unless there are like little triceratops running around the jungle that we haven't found yet. Right. Uh, which would be adorable, I think, if they only live for a few years. But some of the species have died out over time. And we see that in modern day as well. I mean, like the giant sloth was in South America. Like it's on maps in South America not too long ago. And now they're gone. So what we don't know is if a T-Rex, we know that a T-Rex, uh, um, an animal the size and shape of a T-Rex has, um, was on the earth, right? We do know that. What we don't know is how old that animal was when he got that big. No way of knowing. Because it's not actually bones, you can't really do like a DNA That's scan right. because what it actually is is calcification, like petrified. So it's a rock that has replaced a bone. You can search that on your own. We don't need to talk about that necessarily. But, That's right. But there's no way of knowing if that was... There's no way. You know, 10 years old or 1,000 years old. That's right. Or 10,000 years old. Who knows? So that's number one. We don't know. We don't have any idea of, of how old that animal was. So, so, in other words, how long it had been growing. Right. Maybe that animal was 1,000 years old or older. You just don't know, right? Right. Number two, you, you also... That is to say, we don't know if the same species is around today. And when I say the same species, not necessarily a T-Rex. The T-Rex may have been a species. Like a, it's the difference between like a Chihuahua is the same species as a wolf. Okay. <laughs> same. Yes. From same, the same genus. Same. Same. Yeah. Same genus. The same more. family. Right. You might have the same thing back then. Maybe the T-Rex. Was the was the wolf, and now we've got who knows, right? Or maybe T Rex was the Chihuahua that people had bred. That's right. Who knows? You never know, right? So maybe the same family is what I mean. Could be. Uh, the other thing is, um, but it doesn't negate the fact that those things were on the earth at the same time man was. W what, the other thing we don't know is whether or not when the angels came down in Genesis chapter six and started monkeying in the affairs of man, if they didn't also monkey in the affairs of animals. Probably right? did. It's probably some genetic yeah. hybrid going on. That's you right. Look at the, you look at things like um, Babylonian and Egyptian art, when they show like half man, half animal, or different kind of animals mixed together, they either just made that up on their own, which is possible, or it was something that they actually observed or was told to them through tales of the Watchers. Um, uh, I would tend to think that they probably did mess around with some sort of genetic splicing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> just the same as uh, God with the rain, right? What he did was open up that canopy. The reason we don't have things that live as long today as they did back then is because the, the atmosphere radiation. is not the same, right? Solar radiation. The sun gets straight to us now. Right. It didn't back then. So, that's why things live longer, right? The, it didn't cause the same diseases that we have today, and the, the, the solar radiation doesn't, didn't cause the same disease. People didn't die back then the way they do today. Right. Um, the other thing is, God, th those unnatural animals would have, God would not have saved them. No. Right? The on unnatural the ones. Yeah, you're talking about on the ark? No. Yeah. Yeah. So... Maybe a, uh, a T-Rex was a hybrid of, of two things like they do in Jurassic Park, right? So, <clears throat> Whoa. so our uh, perception, there's two things, right? There's two broader concepts here. Our perception of things uh, is based on something we've seen, right? So when, when we say the word dragon, or when we say the word dinosaur, more than likely, the first thing that pops in your head is something you've seen. Yeah, it's Jurassic Park or Game of Thrones. <laughs> Jurassic yeah. Park or Game of Thrones. Right? That's about it. You have to understand. Unless you saw that really bad Christian Bale <laughs> dragon movie. What was that called? Ring really bad. That was good. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Uh, great movie. I watched it the other day. Uh, anyway. I don't know about that. Oh, Rain that? of Fire is what dragon that's called. Dragon with... Uh, Greatness. <laughs> I'll give you Rain of Fire. Dragon Art with... Um, who was that? Who said that? Uh, Dragonheart was Dennis Quaid, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. And um, who's the original James Bond? That guy. Original James Bond was Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery was the voice yeah. of the dragon. Yeah, we <laughs> like movies. Anyway, so you're, you have to understand that that is your perception. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what they were, right? Right. 
The other thing is your concept of time, not yours, our, our concept yeah. of time is so off. We can't even imagine today the what it was like to not have a cell phone 20 years ago, right? So we, we cannot in our brains comprehend what it was like to live a thousand years. Not even a thousand years ago, or much less six thousand years ago. The, the, the things are so different that we, we can't take ourselves back there because we have no concept of what it means. No, I mean there's a there's a generation alive today that does not know a world before 9-11. That's exactly right. Like that's that was a pivotal moment, you know, in, in our lives, because we're in our forties. But but the, you know, anyone under the age of 18 now does it never knew anything any different that's exactly right and that's just a small thing compared to you know world war ii we have no idea we yeah don't know. We, we don't know vietnam we have uh history but really our history is events not right. the time in other words, we have a we we have a, uh, a memory or history in our minds of the Vietnam War or even the Civil War, but we have no concept of what it was like back then, what America was like back then during those during those wars. People who are still alive today have a concept but the, of the Vietnam War, but the Civil War we, we don't know what the world was like back then. No, we have no way of knowing. No. We, so we have a con, we have a an idea of events, but not time. Now contrast that with God Almighty, who is outside of time, and this is even important in your own life. You get tied up with time, right? And really, your concept of time is right now. We have no concept of we don't spend enough time in the Word and in prayer in the Spirit to allow God to show us the future. And he tells us to forget our past. So <clears throat> we have no concept of, of uh, time periods outside of right now. Right. And, and we are so caught up in uh, it was really panic, if you want to get down to it, about like, oh, well, well, I have to do these things so this thing won't, won't mess up in 10 minutes. So you don't want to, you don't want to spend your time the only finite resource you don't want to because you think of it as a finite resource you don't want to spend your time like he was saying in the word and in prayer uh, because you think well I don't have time to do that I have to do this job and I have to get the kids ready and I have to wash the dishes I have to do all these things because all these events are happening if you take the time to do the word and do the prayer like he said you pray out mysteries when you pray in the Spirit. You pray out your own future. You pray out plans. You pray out decisions. You get the mind of Christ. You get the mind of God. The Holy Spirit inside you knows the mind of God, and He gives you the mind of God, but you have to make, you have to make contact. You can't just blow them off to be able to do that. When you do those things, you'll find that you actually create um, easier pathways to accomplish the things you were going to do so that it, in essence, gives you more time to do things in life. Yeah, so the and so the things, thing. <clears throat> Yeah, so the things that you neglect because you think you don't have time, you're neglecting the most important things, right? right? The most important thing in life is the word <laughs> and and spending time with your heavenly Father. That's the most important thing you can do. Spending time with the Holy Ghost is one of the most important things. It's probably the most important thing you can do. Right. Because that thing often gets neglected. And we this is not we're not looking to condemn, condemn anybody. Nobody's condemned. We're all the same, right? We, we, we do the same thing. We we get so caught up in now and what do I have to do now and uh you know, I got to get ready for work tomorrow. I got to, you know, take the kids here just like he was saying. But we neglect the most important thing. And that is spending time with your heavenly Father and the Holy Ghost, right? We are the body of Christ. So the more time you spend, the more, uh, the more um, revelation you get on the fact that you are the body of Christ. We're not just uh, saved. We, we are saved. 
right? I'm just saying we're not just saved or we're not just born again. We're not just uh, Christians or we're not just, we are the body of Jesus Christ himself. We're something different than, Paul says that we were a mystery in the mind of God from the beginning of time. We were a mystery in the mind of God until the beginning of time. He didn't tell a soul until he told the apostle Paul right. what the body of Christ would be, which was it was a called out people set aside from Jews and Gentiles. And, you know, what the, the Bible talks about Jews and Gentiles and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is something completely different. Right. Made up of Jews and Gentiles. Yeah, when you get saved, left you become a member. Being those things to become a member of the body of Christ. Yeah. And we have all been also given the ministry of reconciliation. And that is of utmost importance to God because the reason he sent Jesus to die for us, to be raised up again, was so that he could have this body, so that it, he, he could be, we could be restored to a right relationship with him and not just the relationship that Adam had, but how much more through Christ, because we're now the body of Christ, the relationship we have with God, our Father. And he has made that available to everybody, uh, everybody on the earth. We are, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, which means we are designed to share that information, not to hide, not to think, well, somebody else has, you know, if you have a Muslim friend, the Muslim, the Muslim belief doesn't believe the same thing we do. So I don't want to infringe on their uh, religious belief. Infringe. Don't do it in a, don't, don't be rude. Don't be um, obnoxious about it, but share with them the truth that you have. Give people an opportunity. Um, if you don't give people an opportunity, somebody, nobody else may. The, God needs somebody to do it. That's been a, that's a motive for the entire body of Christ. And as you spend time in the word, as you spend time in prayer, you're going to see specific places to go, people to talk to, people to seek out who are hungry for the things of God, who are desperate for the things of God. And you're the person God designed to bring, bring that information to them. Yeah, so that was a sidebar. Now back to dragons. So what we, so uh, he talked about the dragons. He, he talked about the Leviathan, which is in Job. Right. Uh, Job also speaks of Behemoth, which is in the fortieth chapter of Job, verse fifteen. Behold now, Behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth the grass as an ox. Verse sixteen says, Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong as pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. Interesting. He that made him mm. can make his sword approach unto him. Apparently, yeah, that's a big one, right? He's a chief in the ways of God. Behemoth seemed like a, uh, a, uh, an animal that God liked, right? Chief, either like chief as in like his favorite or chief as in the biggest thing he made. That's right. Um, a lot of people think behemoth means hippopotamus. There's not enough in here to actually say that. It would have been a real big hippopotamus. A big old hippopotamus. Uh, because his bones were like iron. Yep. That thing would have been hard to kill. Uh, Jeremiah 51, 34, Nebuchadnezzar, who's everybody's heard of, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. Isaiah 14, 29 says, Rejoice not thou whole Philistia, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's roots shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. What? I don't know how many fiery flying serpents you've seen, but, uh, but it's clear that these guys were referencing things that they knew about, right? The last one I wanted to read was in Micah. Micah 1.8 says, Therefore I will wail and howl, I will go stripped and naked, I will make a wailing sound like the dragons, and mourning as the owls. So, obviously he knew what owls was because he knew they mourned. And he knew what dragons were because he knew what they sounded like when they wailed. 
So <clears throat> the point being in all of these scriptures is that these guys were writing about things they knew. Right. So clearly there were things either people they knew talked about them or they saw things and they knew how they, how they interacted. So dragons or dinosaurs were on the earth as far into the Bible as Micah is. Which is after the flood. After the flood. So clearly, either these uh, dragons were seafaring creatures, which, as a sidebar, we've only ever explored 5% of the world's, uh, of the, uh, the world's ocean floors. We don't 5%. Really know what's down there. We have no idea, no idea what is down there. No, no idea. We know what we know that the biggest uh, mammal that we've seen is the blue whale. We've seen it, right? Because it surfaces. That's the only reason we know. Right. That's the only reason he breathes air. Right. So he, he surfaces. So we've seen that one. We have no idea what's in the ocean. No idea. In contrast, there are places on the earth, not many at this point, but places in on land that we have not explored. We don't really know what's out there. We know that dragons and or dinosaurs were on the earth after the flood. Right, and we, That's what we, we see evidences throughout history as well. People in relatively modern times, yeah. have uh, up through the Middle Ages at least, you know, when all the knights fought the dragons and everything, they either just made it up, no. Um, or there was something really going on. I'm sure there's some making up that went along with it, but yeah. it was what was really going on that there was something there to kill. Um, some sort of, we probably killed them off mostly, is my guess. Though I did just read an article recently about someone thinking they saw a flying lizard in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> um, so that apparently. Now, was- see, this is like watching a movie that. Very clearly at the beginning of it, they tell you this story was based on a true story, but right. it's dramatized. Right. They took the framework of a story, they dramatized it, and then you watch that movie, you go tell your friends, man, you won't believe what happened. You believe everything they show you in the movie. That's not how that works, right? It was based on a true story. Same here. Things dramatized, um, you know, they're based on things that are True. When he's saying things here. We're not talking about the Bible. The Bible's not no, no, traumatized. No, no. We're about people's. I'm talking about people's. Yeah, yeah. We believe the Bible is true. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. foundation. That's the only foundation we have to go by. I'm talking about the movies you see with dragons in them. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3 is about to come out. It's going to be great. The movies you see with dragons in them, they are based on true stories. That's right. what I mean. Like Hiccup. So uh, the fact is, we learned a lot. By doing this, and we hope you learned a lot. We, as always, we cannot thank you enough for watching. And we encourage we really appreciate it. great discussion uh, yeah. in the comments below. Um, tell us what you think about dinosaurs, dragons. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions. Uh, a lot of people probably think we're nuts, but we appreciate even if you uh, disagree with us that you comment. Please like this video or unlike it is there a way to dislike on youtube yes let's thumbs do down thumbs us up or thumbs us down <laughs> just give us a thumbs thumbs down preferably up but you know be honest and share it share it with your friends share it with your people you don't like just see what happens yeah thank you